Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. F-104 flight training launches at Florida's Kennedy Space Center. Boeing reportedly close to a deal with Embraer. And rotorcraft pilot and mechanic shortage verified. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's March 7th and this is Airborne Unlimited. American businessman John Ross has become the first to complete a new FAA-approved F-104 flight training program at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. The adventurer, pilot, and CEO of Fiesta Insurance completed four training flights in the Mach 2 Plus Lockheed F-104 Starfighter, the same supersonic plane used to prepare Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo astronauts for space travel. His ground school and flight training was completed at NASA's shuttle landing facility, providing an opportunity to use the same runway the space shuttle returned to after coming back from its space missions. Ross completed his multi-day training program with Starfighters Aerospace, a privately owned company that maintains a fleet of F-104 Starfighters approved for use in flight training and scientific testing. Starfighters Aerospace is authorized by the FAA to offer civilian spaceflight training from NASA's Kennedy Shuttle Landing Facility. F-104 flight training follows a comprehensive syllabus for purpose of type-specific training in the F-104 and is authorized by a letter of deviation authority issued to Starfighters by the FAA in September of 2017. The amount of time it takes to complete the training will vary by the pilot but it's anticipated to range from 3 to 10 days. After the break, one man files nearly 900 complaints about noise at Longmont, Colorado Airport. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news spy at aero news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The city of Longmont, Colorado has received 949 complaints about noise at embattled Longmont Airport in 2017, a sharp increase over the 257 complaints registered in 2016, according to airport manager David Slater. Of those complaints, 825 were filed by a single person, who Slater identified to the council as resident John Palmer. Slater has reached out to Palmer, but there is a lack of interest on Palmer's part to have a meeting or discussion. The airport has been targeted by a tiny handful of locals who have harassed the airport for years. In a recent ceremony at Embraer's facility in San Jose dos Campos, Embraer received type certificate for the E-190E2, the first member of the E-Jet C-2 family of commercial aircraft, from the Brazilian aviation agency, the FAA, and EASA. It is the first time that an aircraft program with a level of complexity of the E-2 has received a type certificate from three major worldwide certification authorities simultaneously. Operators thinking of buying a pre-owned AW-139 or AW-109 helicopter will now have the option of a 500-hour, one-year engine warranty under Pratt & Whitney Canada's now certified pre-owned engine program for the PT-6C, 67C, PW-206C, and PW-207C engines. 
initially being launched in collaboration with global helicopter dealer Rotortrade. Aircraft dealers were certified the engines under the CPO program through Pratt & Whitney Canada. A deal described as last minute, made by Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel to expand O'Hare International Airport, is drawing fire from American Airlines, saying it gives an unfair competitive advantage to rival United Airlines. Emanuel announced the expansion plans last week. Today, we introduced a historic plan to transform O'Hare International Airport and create billions in economic development, he said via social media. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Negotiations are continuing between Boeing and Embraer for the possible formation of a partnership that would be focused on commercial aviation. The negotiations are seen by the industry as at least partly a response to a recent deal between Airbus and Bombardier, in which the European plane maker acquired a majority stake in the Canadian company's C-Series airliners. But the Brazilian government allegedly had no interest in Boeing owning a controlling interest in Embraer. An initial bid by Boeing to buy Embraer was rejected by the Brazilian government, which said it would welcome partnerships, but not one that transferred Embraer's control to another country. At that point, the discussion shifted to a joint commercial jet venture rather than an outright takeover. Boeing CEO Dennis Muhlenberg reported that he believes the two companies have structured a deal concept that will satisfy the needs of everybody involved. The negotiations for a potential third company was confirmed by Brazilian Defense Minister Raul Jungmann last week. Such a deal would potentially make Boeing a major player in the regional jet market. Muhlenberg told Bloomberg that the two companies have highly complementary product lines. After these messages, rotorcraft pilot and mechanic shortage verified. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. The results of a study forecasting the U.S. supply of rotorcraft pilots and mechanics over the next 18 years has been released confirming what many in our industry suspected. Unless there are some fundamental changes in policy, outreach scholarships, and access to financing, the helicopter industry faces large-scale deficits, and the amount of available and qualified licensed and certificated pilots and mechanics. The study projects a shortage of 7,469 helicopter pilots in the United States between 2018 and 2036. For maintenance technicians, the numbers are even more concerning. The industry is projected to be short 40,613 certificated aviation mechanics in the United States between 2018 and 2036. In addition to documenting the projected shortage, the study gathered information on how it is already changing operations. For example, more than 50% of surveyed operators said that the shortage of pilots and mechanics would definitely or probably interfere with their operations' ability to grow over the next five years. Regional airlines are actively recruiting helicopter pilots. More than 500 transferred to fixed-wing operations in 2017 alone. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside for normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.